So three months ago, I took the decision of selling my MacBook Pro 15 inch and going for this MacBook Air M1 for software engineering as well as for video editing. And in fact, in the last three months, all the videos that you have seen on this channel, in fact, the thumbnails as well were shot and edited, not shot, but edited on this MacBook Air. And I have used it extensively for Android and iOS development. In fact, I even lent this MacBook Air to my roommate for a little bit of his computer science assignments as well. So here are our thoughts. But first, this video is brought to you by Algo Expert. More about that later. Now let's talk about the hardware. We have already discussed it has excellent hardware. I am unfortunately able to connect to only one monitor because it's Air, not Pro. So one monitor connected with MacBook Air is mostly enough for me. The screen size is unfortunately smaller because I'm used to bigger MacBooks. So I feel a little bit strain on my eyes. So that's why I only use MacBook Air with this 32 inch monitor connected. Now more about the RAM. So eight gigabyte of RAM was enough for me in the first week, but now let's talk about that in detail. So for example, here I have these many apps open, including Docker, which was not available last time, but I'll talk about Docker later, including Android Studio and its emulator. And with Final Cut Pro, the last video I edited, Anyways, even after then, it's not crashing. Eight gigabytes RAM is enough. Even if I show you the activity monitor, it says that around seven gigabytes of RAM is being used. But even after that, even if you launch Xcode, I think it will not crash because it's optimized to that absolute degree. It will, I think, automatically disable some of the apps on at the bottom to save memory. I don't know how it's doing it, but it's amazing. Actually, the storage is in fact enough. The 256 GB SSD is enough, but the RAM problem only arises when you are video editing and running Android and iOS emulators at the same time. So two emulators, iOS and Android with Final Cut Pro. Otherwise, I never felt like that I'm running out of memory and it never showed me the icon to force quit some of the apps so that you can have more RAM. And you guys will not believe the fact that browsing is so, so fast. YouTube opens almost instantly, not just on Safari, now on Chrome as well, because even Chrome is now optimized for M1 Mac now, and every page opens pretty darn fast. Now let's start with Android Studio. So in the last video, I had mentioned that I was forced to run Android apps for testing from the MacBook Air to my Pixel phone because the emulators were not compatible at that point of time and you had to install ARM based emulators which were really slow. So I was just forced to use a physical device but now things have changed. So on 2nd December or I think between 2nd and 6th December, Google or I think JetBrains, one of those launched specific M1 based Android emulator and it works like a charm. There are some limitations. For example, on the website they have written the web view, sound or a couple of features don't work on the emulator on MacBook Air, but I don't need those features. So most of the time or most of the assignments that you'll get will not need that features or you can get a physical device to test those, but I never had to test those features. So I think the emulator on MacBook Air works like a charm and I really enjoy using it. But I did encounter some bugs. So for example, sometimes the autocomplete on Android Studio while in XML or in Java, the autocomplete wasn't working. So after a couple of restarts, it did work. So that happened only one time. Otherwise, 99% 99, 99 of the times, no bugs and it works very, very smooth with the emulator. Now talking about the package manager. So in the last video, I had mentioned that I wasn't able to use Homebrew to install GCC, which is required for C++ programming. So now Homebrew not only runs natively on this MacBook Air, or I can install Homebrew natively as well as on Rosetta, which is virtualization. So either way you install it, you will easily be able to install any packages. For example, I have installed ADB through Homebrew and it was installed within or maybe less than a minute. So it was really fast. Now talking about Xcode or iOS development, I did face one problem. So I have an existing app, which I made, I think two to three years ago. It had some unit tests for Xcode or you can say iOS development. So those unit tests use some hardware features only in Intel Mac. So that's why you have to go through series of steps to convert that app from Intel 
to silicon so it'll it's only one time struggle once you have gone through it it will work like a charm but if you are a student and if you're making an xcode or ios project for homework or for assignment you don't have to worry about it it's only if you have an existing app from like two to three years ago or even for six months even if it's like six months old so that's the only thing you have to keep in mind now before talking about my python experience for data science i want to give a quick shout out to algo expert because algo expert has finally launched its mock interview rounds now you can take a mock interview with not just an algo expert user or with a professional or with your friend so that you can take enough mock interviews before taking your final interview round with Google, Facebook, Ma Amazon or any of the fan companies. And also they have around 130 coding problems which will help you in this journey because they have video explanation as well as hint for each and every problem starting from level easy to very hard. So definitely try it out and if you will use the link in the description below you'll get 10% off discount. Now let me share my Python struggle. So I spent five to six hours to install TensorFlow, SciPy, NumPy, all these libraries for data science on Python. All of them work except TensorFlow for me but a lot of developers I can see have installed TensorFlow pretty easily. I'll show you so many tutorials. I saw this tutorial 18 steps to install TensorFlow. It was taking so long that I, I just quit. I don't want to install because it's 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 really cumbersome process to install it. So I still use Google Collab and Google Collab I have like these cybersecurity attacks that I had made in my machine learning class, I think, and they still work fine on Collab. But I can tell you about this YouTube channel called Xcreate. He tested TensorFlow extensively on M1 MacBook Air, Pro and 16 inch MacBook. And he found out MacBook M1 are definitely two times faster as compared to the 16 inch MacBook for TensorFlow. And he was able to run it. So it's just a struggle of setting up the environment. So once you have set up the environment like TensorFlow, Keras, all these libraries, then everything will work fine. So you have to be patient. Once you have set it up, this MacBook Air will give you an amazing experience because like I have been programming on MacBooks from the last three years. I just enjoy working on it. So I use IntelliJ, which is also an application by JetBrains for web development. And I have tested it for Node, Angular, and it works like a charm, but you have to go through the struggle of spending a bit of time to install Angular and Node.js, but this is a hello world project of HTML5 with some JavaScript works pretty fast. And finally Docker, I was able to install it on M1 Mac as well, but you have to keep in mind that Docker is in the pre-release stage right now. So there are some known issues. For example, you cannot run an existing Docker container, which was made for Intel Mac. So you have to create kind of a new Docker container, but after a little bit of struggle, you can easily use Docker. So this is hello world from Docker. And if you will try to create even a new container, it will work. And just like in the last video, I had mentioned that Adobe Photoshop crashes a lot of times because the M1 version of Adobe Photoshop is not out yet. So you have to be patient, but only five to 10 crashes in the last three months. I think it's a good number, but you have to be careful enough to save it every time you create the project or make changes so that when it crashes, you do not lose the data. So I'm not mad. And otherwise, I'm really happy with this purchase, especially because of Final Cut Pro alone, because I am able to render a 10 minute vlog in less than two minutes. So outstanding 1080p vlog and I'm very happy just because of that one feature alone. So, you know, while traveling uh, in, in plane, when I'm going to India, like this will be very, very useful. And I like the portability, but it's just that I cannot use it for more than one to two hours because I feel strain in my eyes. So overall best purchase. And I think if you're a college student, you can go for it as well. But remember that you have to wait for Docker and I think other than that, it's pretty much ready for all the programmers. So I wish you all the best. So thank you so much for watching. Before ending the video, I had a Zoom call yesterday with Rachid. And while and giving a mock interview update. with him, I noticed that Android Studio was slow when Zoom call was being recorded. So because Zoom, Zoom recording takes a lot of RAM and Android Studio with emulator takes a lot of RAM. So that's why Android Studio slowed down. So that's why if you think you're going to do a lot of presentations with emulator on, then I think you can go for 16 gigabytes of RAM. But most of us don't need it. I was fine, but I felt that Android Studio was a bit slow. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.